Welcome to the new Put a Ring on It After Show. Every Monday after the show airs, we're ringing in lunch with the biggest and most outrageous moments from the show every week. Now, for this show, we have the host, Kojo from Little Black Book, and of course, relationship master coach, Dr. Nicole from the show. Now, the audience Everything. wants to hear from you guys, so make sure that you're chatting, make sure you're chiming in, because your comments are what's going to make this hot. Well, guys, we're here for episode one, the premiere, and season three of Put a Ring on It. And uh, we got to meet some of the couples in this episode. We saw Fonzo and Shay, Shorty and Kenneth, and Charlie and Otis. And right away, we saw some major cracks and some issues come up in the relationships. Um, and so I want to kind of get you guys' thoughts um, on the premiere of this episode and what your thoughts are around the different couples and some of the issues that were going on as well. Well, I know also as well that the ladies went on their first date and we got to see the return of my boy Hollywood. Shout out to Hollywood. <laughs> um, you know, he was on a date with Shorty and it, things got a little bit interesting. And I've told him, Hollywood, I don't know that we can tone Hollywood down, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Dr. Nicole, you, it seems like you have your hands full with all the couples this season. Like every season we see the couples the you know, the, the antics get, you know, pushed a little bit last season, obviously, you know, it, it, we were trending. So this season, it looks like you definitely have your hands full with all the couples. Listen, I, I'm clear when it's time for us to do put a ring on it. All 10 fingers are going to be involved. I need fingers and toes and, and brain and everything ready because you just never know where things are going to go. You just, you just don't know. I love that. I love that. Um, so, again, as I said, we, we got to see a date between Hollywood and Shorty. And I really wanted to find out, uh, maybe I can get Dr. Nicole your input as well, what you kind of perceived uh, from their date because it was quite it was quite a, a naughty you know hands-on type of date so I wanted to kind of glean what did you what did you uh see in the, the date between Shorty and Hollywood I mean there was some energy right I I think there was some attraction there was some some levity between the two of them you could definitely feel a vibe and some energy and and you know, just on that first impression, I was like, okay, uh, okay, let, let, let's see what this is going to uh, look like. What was funny to me also, so of course there's this big buildup and, you know, Hollywood is obviously a really good looking guy. We know that. <laughs> but to see the interaction between Kenneth and Hollywood with them both being from New Orleans, that was hilarious to me. And I thought, you know, it made Shay obviously feel a little bit more comfortable with him. So to me, it really felt like a friendly date. I don't know if there be, will be sparks between the two of them because it felt like Hollywood was a safe place for her to talk and just very familiar because even the dialect between Kenneth and Hollywood sound very, you know, they sound very much alike. It's interesting to see them uh, chop it up, right? at the mm -hmm. beginning and it's almost like uh you know they, they're they trying to one-up each other a little bit even the playing field i was like okay y'all gonna be homies go ahead and be homies but he's about to go out on a date with shorty right. so let's, let's see how this works and you you see quickly that things start to kind of shift right when the reality that you know shorty's out on a date with with hollywood kind of sinks in for him mm, okay I, i'm hearing these points let's jump to the clip and uh, have a little look at the date between shorty and hollywood as well i still can't get my thing to rise oops that oh. don't sound good huh? <laughs> my bad let me help you so you have to move your hands up with it that's how i make it rise yeah <laughs> stop being nasty no that's you <laughs> oh, i'm saying i'm trying to get it to go up <laughs> Maybe I need to wet my hands some more or something. Yeah, she did say keep yeah. it wet so it can, you know. Come on now, you, there you go. There that you was go. you, you started it. No. So I just had to throw a little, no. a little in there. <laughs> like last time I saw you, you were getting engaged. What happened between then and this date with me and you? 
The experience was very good. I've grown a lot. It opened me up to a lot of things. It, it showed me that I was selfish. Mm -hmm. It also showed me that you don't have to stick with the person if you're not happy. You could be around a person, they still can make you laugh and smile. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know mm -hmm. it ain't gonna go. Right. So talk to me. Let me know what you're feeling. I feel a little bad. Why? No, my boo is all at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I'd have been gone for a few hours. Like, damn, this real. She really done went out with old dude. Like, yeah. You trying to go out with somebody from my home state? Oh, hell nah. Thinking, man, this dude trying to be all smooth, you know, put his arms around my lady. I don't even want to see the video. So, Dr. Nicole, what was interesting to me about that clip is that even though they're having some serious, you know, there's sexual tension, there's a lot of uh, suggestive conversation, Hollywood made her feel comfortable to where I don't feel like um, Shorty Mac felt like he was inappropriate. You know, he's got this gorgeous smile and he's talking, but it, it, it you know, it was, the conversation was pretty hot. It was pretty hot. There's he, definitely some attraction there. Yeah, I mean, and he, you know, what makes people often feel comfortable is if you show up as yourself, right? If you show up authentically as, as who you are, then it, for most will bring those walls down to be able to say, oh, okay, we're in the same room and we're speaking the same language. All right, cool. So I think, I think, you know, his charisma and just his desire for her to be comfortable, right. Mm -hmm. Helped a lot. That's what I saw. So I agree with you. Yeah. And, and just, uh, I think Hollywood, like you, you said earlier on as well, Hollywood, uh, very similar to Ken as well in terms of the way they kind of have a boisterous energy as well um, coming yeah. from the same kind of area I think that relativity um, and kind of resemblance also kind of helped uh, Shorty feel a bit more comfortable plus she'd also known him she's seen him on the TV from season one that also kind of helps as well kind of ease you in uh, when you get onto a date um, but I think interestingly watching their date and you know she was even thinking about Ken whilst on a date which is I, for me it's a it's a positive sign i would say um that yeah. at least you know you're not all the way gone you know you're still thinking about your partner it's in the yeah. back of your mind but i think she was trying to give herself the best chance possible to kind of really experience the process and really get out what she needs to get out of it which is a shift of a pandagon of a mindset of what you had before and say was that what i really needed and i think that was partly what she was kind of getting from hollywood with that energy that he brings to the table as well yeah. Now, he, he did, Hollywood did drop a little, a little nugget and let her know that what he learned, you know, during his journey was that you don't always have to stay with the person. So I thought that was, a, you know, even though she felt comfortable, he did plant that seed that if you're not happy, that you definitely should be open to moving on. So, you know, I think the date went great, but that was definitely telling. And I definitely think he wanted to leave her with that information, you know, it didn't work out for me and I'm doing great. I'm actually, you know, happy to be back out here dating again. And so he definitely left her with a lot to think about. The very dangerous thought it was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When he says at the end, you know, you don't have to, when you know it's not gonna go, I thought that that was powerful mm -hmm. because he says, you know, if you're not happy in one moment, but then he takes it a little further and he's like, when you see, that the, the possibility of longevity and building together is really not in the future. It's not in the cards. Be true to that, right? And I thought that that was, that was a big thing for him from when we saw him the first season, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely a big so, thing. So that date was hot. I mean, they had the whole ghost, uh, you know, date with the pottery, very romantic, very... You know, right. sensual, but yet sweet. So yeah. now we get a chance to check out the date with Charlie and Otis. Otis, I'm home. Hey. Mm. Well, I'm about to make some dinner. I know you're I know you starving. You need some food. For real? Yeah, I just. What is this? Oh, that was. Oh. oh. Give me my flowers. Oh, flower. your flowers. <laughs> Can you nah. put them in a... Um, uh, no. Nah. Trash. <laughs> no, don't, don't, trash. Don't throw my flowers in trash. the trash. Trash. Don't throw my flowers in uh, the trash. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Th
Isn't that funny? Not that serious. Flowers? <laughs> and you brought them to the house? Because they're pretty. Help, help me understand this. You brought them to the house for <laughs> The real? flowers are pretty. They're just flowers. Mm -hmm. There should never be a time that she brought an actual gift from another guy home. This is non-negotiable, and it's just simply disrespectful. So, Mr. Smooth, what was he like? Huh? I got to hear this, because you don't. He was you brought nice. Flowers he was nice. House. He was. It was a nice day. So y'all play soccer with us. That's it. That's it. That was it. So when he gave you those flowers, you, he ain't sneaking in for a little hug. You saying? Maybe a hug. Maybe a hug. That's oh, okay, that's <laughs> that's a, a violation hug. of no, it's not. boundaries. Yeah, a it hug? is. So I don't do care if you give someone a hug. Oh, now not you really don't care. Don't. Otis, you need to relax, calm down. I'm this, calm. This is the process that you signed up for. If you're gonna act like this on this every is, this day, is the calm version. then how are we gonna move forward? You're being extra for no reason. Why flowers. didn't you have him keep the flowers? You're not being realistic. Oh, okay. We'll go with that. What are you about to do with this? Put it in the oven? That's gonna be uh, dinner for one. I'm sure y'all already ate, right? We did not eat. Y'all didn't eat? played soccer. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Otis is petty. Petty. So you're gonna, uh, Make all of it? Yeah, I'm gonna make the slab. For sure. Excuse me, excuse me. Thank you. That's fine, I'll warm up these leftovers. Yeah, I think I might take this bottle to the head. I'm not playing with her. Maybe this guy who he respects so much to bring his flowers in the house, maybe he should have bought you food. Dr. Nicole. I did not like that at all. I did not like Otis' behavior. And what's so crazy about this is he knew this is what they signed up for. So for him to act like a spoiled brat, first of all, throwing the flowers in the trash and being very aggressive with that. And then, you know, telling her that maybe she needs to go take a shot. Like it, his attitude was really horrible. And I'm wondering if this is happening on the first date where she just gave someone a hug and receive flowers, how is he possibly going to be able to make it through the entire process? Like this was to me a huge red flag with his behavior. Yeah, hard to watch, right? Mm -hmm. hard, to, hard to watch because he um, he's honest. He says, this is the calm version. So he's letting you know that there is more mm -hmm. where this came from. So it, it, it becomes hard to watch when people are dishonoring and disrespectful to one another because something doesn't feel good for them or something hurts or something has, has shifted them in a way that makes them uncomfortable. And then their response is dishonoring and disrespectful. It, it's, it's challenging to watch that. And it's something that some people experience in their relationships. It's not healthy, but it is something that some people experience. Do you think that he signed up and maybe wasn't sure what he was actually signing up for? Because the premise of the show is very clear. You're going to date other people. So for him to act like that, do you think that he was surprised by his own behavior? Or did he just not assume that she was actually going to take the process seriously? I think it's fair to say that all couples on Put a Ring on It are surprised. <laughs> you know, everybody tells them this is real. This is not an act. This is not a performance. This is your relationship. And here's what's going to happen. And everybody gives permission every step of the way. They know what's coming. They've seen seasons before. And then when they get into it, then it's like, then they believe yeah. what everybody's telling them. But beforehand, it's almost like they, they think, okay, we, we can game the, the process and not be authentic and not be honest and not be real and not show our true relationship, but it's not a game. So you can't game something that's not a game. Yeah. Right. So then you get to really see the fullness of what's happening because it's, it's, it's given a platform for all your stuff.
good yeah. or not so good. Mm. You know, and I think watching the scene, I was disappointed. Uh, for yeah. watching it as a man uh, mm-hmm. and seeing another man um, dealing with his partner, I was I was disappointed. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why I was disappointed because um, as I, I agree with you, Dr. Nicole, as well, I don't think, I don't think anybody can really be ready fully for what the process is really going to entail, right? Your partner dating somebody else. Um, but I think what it really does show is that when we have wounds, emotional ones, especially that aren't dealt with, this show adds pressure to those wounds. And then the nature of the beast comes out, which is your, what is your go-to uh, behavior that you feel most comfortable with? And we okay. see with um, this young man here where, uh, you know, the, the nature of his go-to behavior is to, is to control, right? Or at least to dominate or to, um, to overbear, right? In that moment, several things came out to me. I'm calling it black before reason. I've got my notes here. So I'm gonna go through what I said. I saw this. <laughs> Come on from the notes, Kojo. <laughs> Thank you. Number one, I do understand where he was coming from in terms of the flower. It's what it signifies for him. I mm-hmm. wish he would have expressed that. So when we, when we talk about emotional regulation, what we really mean here is that how do you, how are you able to express, how are you able to process and how are you able to understand your own emotions is really important. Now, clearly, I'm sure he can understand his emotions. I think he can process it. I think his problem here is expressing his emotions because in that moment when you felt disrespected, I hear you, bro. I, I got you. You, you. you actually did part of it. He actually expressed, you know, that I was disrespectful. Then he took the flowers and then dashed them in the bin. And that, that I'm like, bro, look, you see, you, you're not going to able to make her understand by doing that. All she's going to feel, all she's going to do is feel something, but may not come to the understanding that you really want her to see where you're coming from. And that set the tone for the rest of the conversation. Then we've got the situation with uh, being petty. Then we have the salmon situation. Look, you can't go into, into negative equity in a relationship by suddenly go taking the salmon that you were going to cook for each other and said, well, you already eaten, haven't you? Then she said she hasn't. Then you said, well, well I'm only cooking for one right now. So, you know, and for me, yeah. when I start to see those type of behaviors, it's, 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 a, it's a very dangerous road to go down because as the partner, you know, that person now has to make a choice. Do I, how do I fight? How do I fight back in this moment? And when I say fight in terms of, do I broke a piece? Do I fight back the same way you're fighting me? Do I sit there and cry? What, 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 what's my response that I have to, to respond to what you're giving to me right now? And I think the end of what he brought towards the end was really sad, which is where he said, go take a shower. Cause I knew exactly what that meant. There is no other way he can put that across. I know exactly what that meant. And I was looking at it as a man to man. I was like, bro, you could have done everything else, which would have been petty. But this part here, you are now going beneath the petty and we're getting dangerous. You're telling us to go and take a shower. Why? Because you want to yeah. assinuate that she's what? Dirty, unclean. Mm-hmm. And that's very dangerous to be doing that for your partner. You're basically, you know, and, and I wasn't with it. And it's unfortunate, but I think it says a lot more about how he responds to when his under pressure in a way that he doesn't particularly like. Yeah. Painful, painful. But, but one of the things that I love about the show is because it's real mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and because it's giving a bigger room for people to be fully who they are, That's we true. get to look at it That's from true. a safe place and say, is that the highest and best that I deserve yeah. in a partnering relationship. Is that a partnering relationship? Is that how we uh, collaborate, love, co-create together? Is that what it looks like? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what we do as an audience. When we're watching, we're like, hmm. Painful, disrespectful, dishonoring, not cool. Some other words we could think of, <laughs> go with, right? Those are some, some startup words, mm-hmm. but it gives us an opportunity to look at someone else's circumstance and say, is, is that the goal? Because so, oh, after seeing that, I'm very interested to see how Otis is going to handle himself when he goes on a date coming up. I, I'm when I tell you I'm locked in, I am locked in on Otis because for him to have such 
understood, you know, Kojo saying, well, maybe, you know, him seeing her receive flowers from a guy, but him being upset at the fact that she gave someone a goodbye hug, that's, it's going to be really interesting to see if he, if he um, stays within those boundaries himself when he goes out, you know, uh, I literally cannot, he is the one I'm looking for, for the date for the next day, <laughs> because, okay. you know, if he, if he does not, what does that say? If it's not okay for her to do that, he knows they're on a show where they're potentially both going to be dating. Yeah. What, 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 I guess, um, signal is that is he sending out if when he goes out it's okay for him to you know hug and and engage and talk without her penalizing him the same way oh we got a whole season to watch <laughs> it's gonna be so much tea and so much to engage in oh you just wait crystal you <laughs> you just wait well we i got a lot of just to even touch on that, you know, um, just I always use my personal experience in this, which is I was a tit for tat kind of person. I can guarantee you that if he's doing that with a salmon, I'm going to tit for tat you. I'm going to get he's you back. He's a petty person. Yeah, if I'm petty, I'm going to get you back. Petty. Yeah, I'll try to find a way to get you back. Now, how that shows up, I don't know. But when you're petty like that, you are going to find a way to get back to a person because you often use passive aggressive means to attack an individual right so if your partner is the person that's the target you're going to find a way to get them back so if if the right. date is what it's going to be something will happen on a date where you'll get her back on that way it's just it's and this is why when you're i'm choose my words very carefully when when you i'm going to use my words emotional wounded when you're emotionally wounded right and there are certain aspects to your behavior which become very passive you know as a man you've got to be you, you've got to be very very careful because I, i'm looking at him as a gentleman but I'm, I'm also asking another question aside that which is how long has this been going on and mm -hmm. why is our sister still taking this because that's mm -hmm. the key question i have to ask i have to ask an accountable question also to the other person if you've been seeing this behavior for so long if it's not new why have we been uh, why have we sat there and taking this behavior because i don't think this is the first time this is him on camera is him being his authentic self so why sis has this been a constant behavior that you've accepted for so long that's also another question we have to ask. As much as I want to, I'm blaming him too, but I'm just saying the other side. Maybe Dr. Nicole, maybe I don't know if you can. <laughs> I mean, one no. of the things, yeah, one of the things we're going to see this season is how people resolve conflict. Mm. What kind of tools do they have, right? Because at the end of the day, the goal is to manage yourself first. And people who are focused on managing other people, it's right. usually because they are unable to manage themselves. Mm -hmm. So everything is out instead of the in, right? Everything is outward and trying to uh, uh, sh manipulate the pieces for the people, right? Yeah. So one of the things that I think is gonna be interesting this season is to watch how do people communicate? You say you love me. I say I love you. Ooh, 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 we are in love. <laughs> but then how does our communication either express that love or damage one another? That'll that tell you. It's going to be interesting. This first episode was eye opening in a total different way. Like I said, this season, you seem, it feels like you have your hands full. We actually ended this first episode with a scene with Shay and Fonzo. Now, Dr. Nicole, I'm concerned about this couple because we can see that Shay is really hurt by the fact that Fonzo has not worked harder to create a relationship with her and his mother. And you can feel like I could really feel her pain. You can see when she's talking about it. And I also can feel his side because he has an ex that his mother is close to. And it seems like he's just kind of unable to figure out how to make that relationship work. So he's just kind of abandoned ship. And he's like, this, this is not important to me or it's not something I can fix. So I'm going to let it go. But we see that it's really, really hurting her. So let's check out this clip of the two of them. And really, this issue is unique to their situation, but it's really causing Shay a lot of pain. 
Imagine being in a relationship, living with someone, and that person tells you they're going out of town to go to work, and lo and behold, you see online they're on a family vacation with the baby mama, their mom, everybody's there except for you. It was an eye-opener. Mr. Alfonso, what do you think when you hear some of what she's saying? How does it make you feel? Oh, I already know these issues that she's speaking of. That doesn't speak to how it makes you feel. Oh, I don't see how it's a problem for me. So why are we here then? <laughs> to get help with this. Help with what? Something you're not going to talk about. Help with what? We're why are we here? It. No, you're not. <laughs> This is a simple, small thing to ask somebody to do. Relationships, identity is everything. Who are you to me? Who am I to you? Right. Who am I to the people that you call family? We just had an extravagant engagement party, so if that's not telling the world who this person is to me, what else can I be doing? Fonzo, but you're not telling the people that's important. You have never gone to your mom. How many times do I ask you that? You've never said anything to your mom and you keep laughing. I'm not laughing. So, okay, we don't need to be here. Miss J, I got you. No. I got him. I, I'm, I'm here. We do everything. not need to be here because it's not funny. I think I need a second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Until there is a true handle on how we're going to move forward with family issues, it's a wrap. Absolutely, like hurtful. And you can tell that I don't know if, if Fonzo understands how much that hurts her, but you could tell the reaction from Charlie and Shay that, the, um, and in Shorty, that they they understood. When you hear that he has gone on a family vacation with his mother and his ex, that is beyond hurtful. And you know, it's 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 interesting how he seems to feel like there's nothing he can do, and he just kind of throws his hands up. In the meantime, his you know ex fiance girlfriend that he claims he wants to be, you know, have a future with is struggling along and hurting. And he just doesn't seem to be really connected to her pain. Dr. Nicole, what in the world is going on? What did you see in that? Because he just seems very checked out of that entire dynamic. And, and even though he realizes that it's really causing, basically it's caused their relationship to come to a standstill. Yeah, I, I love these uh, coaching sessions with them because they are able to empathize with one another and see what the other couple is going through. And, and Shay at the end says she talks about not knowing how we're going to move forward. And that's all often the issue, right, especially for a lot of men in family dynamics. Men often will seek to do things that they can be good at. Oh. And in family dynamics, when you have a previous family and now you're seeking to make a new family, the, the first family sometimes does not make it simple for you to blend without everybody feeling like they're in a blender, right? And, and most folks male or female, they don't want to feel like they're in a blender. And after they make some attempts, what happens is you can often recognize that you feel the other person's pain, but you don't have anything in your toolkit that's going to fix this. Yeah. So sometimes instead of men saying, I got nothing, <laughs> screwdrivers don't work, the duct tape don't work, Hammer's not, I got nothing. I need somebody to help me get something to work this out. They throw their hands up and say, I got nothing. Yeah. So my, my, my uh, expectation is because you are in my life in this new stage, you'll be okay. Because I can't make them do anything and I'm with you. So... We should all be good. And we know that that's not how it works, right? No, but the fact that he went on the vacation with the ex, that is another huge issue to me. I don't know anyone, any woman in any situation that would be okay being on the outside while her significant other goes on a family vacation with their ex and his mother. Like that's just not even, that's beyond unacceptable. Living mad. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think, Kojo? I, I got my notes again, guys. And uh, thank you, Dr. Nicole, for breaking it down as well. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, and, and you perfectly touched on it as us as men, um, especially when it comes to problem solving. And I think what I saw, what my first initial thoughts of when I uh, saw Alfonso um, was that uh, when you feel like you don't have the answers to something, uh, people have different reactions. His uh, his particular reaction for me spoke a bit of passivity, right? Um, in terms of, do you know what? If I bury my head in the sand, it's just going to go away. Uh, like if I just bury my head in the sand, this would sort out itself and I'd rather not deal with it, right? So he becomes almost apathetic towards a situation, which is what causes the pain for Shay because when she's now talking to him, it's like he doesn't care. No, he does. He just doesn't have the answers. And when we don't feel like we have the answers, we feel powerless and helpless. And so when you feel that kind of uh, feeling, you don't want to feel that as a man, right? Because a lot of our the reality of society is that as a man, you should have answers. In fact, when we talk about masculine energy, we talk about executing, you know, problem solving. These are the kind of things we associate with masculine men. And so if you haven't got the answers, we're now looking at you like, bruh, so you ain't got the answers? <laughs> Like, come on, bro. And I think the greater issue necessarily isn't just action. I think for, for me, I was like, well, if you have issues with matriarchal mom, is what I heard, what we heard in the episode, versus, you know, your wife now. I love the scripture which says, you know what, you should cleave to your wife. Be meaning your new family is really important. In fact, that's so much more important because that's your new family that you're building. And so what I felt Alfonso needed is good, effective boundaries. And it made me ask a real question. Why hasn't he been able to build effective boundaries with the mother and then his actual uh, uh, with Shay? And then we've got this whole mess coming in because you're passive. You've got your ex also involved because she's baby mother. You've, you maybe don't want to fight and you don't want to lose that relationship. So now you've got that involved with your mother too, right? So all of this is just playing up to be a very messy situation. And I think it all starts from when you don't create effective boundaries because you're not sure how to actually implement effective boundaries, maybe because you fear you might hurt someone's feelings or, you know, you might feel like, I don't know how to do it, right? Because you may, you may have never been taught that. You may have never been given that room to do so. If you've got a matriarchal mom, this might not be the MO you get as a man. So, you know, I, I felt for the brother, but he's got to stop being inactive. Yes, Dr. Nicole, please. I, you know, one of the things I love about my role on the show is that I... I'm very intentional about holding the space for everybody to do their work, activate action, and seek the outcome that's going to be better for, for, for them as a person and their relationship if they choose or moving on if they choose. That, that's what the space is being held for. And a lot of times, you know, I always think the best that most people don't do because they're just trying to be a jerk and they're just trying to show up in everybody's life as an adjutant. They do what they do because it's what they know to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And often if what they know to do doesn't work, they just keep doing it. Yep. And you're like, well, if the duct tape is not working on the door, somebody has a hinge. Hallelujah. <laughs> But if you don't know there's a hinge, you don't know there is such a thing as a hinge. Most people don't want to say what I have is not working. Right. So those are two different things. I have nothing that's working mm -hmm. is one thing. What I have is not working is another. And those are two really transparent places that ask for men to be able to say the outcome is where you are going to get the, 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 uh, that's where you're going to see your strength. Cause he it, is it's finding gonna affect the outcome, right? So, so if you couldn't get there before with the previous situation, now is the time to figure out how to do it in this situation because avoidance is not going to get you a better outcome. It's just going to make it more painful. But the other thing I want to get your thoughts on is, do you, do you remember where she says, this is simple? Yeah. This is so simple. Mm -hmm. 
And and do you get that feeling like not for him? Mm-mm. It's, it's, it's not simple. simple. It's not simple for him. He also he also alluded to the fact that he threw her this extravagant party. And mm-hmm. to him, he said, you know, this was very public. There's no bigger way to let everyone know that who you are in my life. And she kind of like was like, well, no, it's not the most important people. But it seemed to me that he was saying to him that was his that was his try. Maybe that was his duct tape on the door <laughs> that wasn't mm-hmm. working for her. But I did see that he actually did try to solve it by doing something that he thought would give the impression and let people know her identity. But mm-hmm. it did not register that way for her. So we see that I don't even know if she interpreted that as what he was trying to do. But in that conversation, you see that he said, I did this. And this was the big public exclamation. This lets people know how much more can I possibly do? And she's like, but it does. But she really wants that relationship with his mother. So it seems like 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 you said, Dr. Nicole, it's a duct tape, a duct tape solution for a door that's not working. But it seems like at this point, he doesn't know what else to do. Yeah. And yeah. don't we see that in a lot of relationships, mm-hmm. right? People give up because especially if one partner thinks this is, this is simple. Mm-hmm. And, and from the other partner's experience, they're like, it's simple for you because you're not executing it. Mm-hmm. it it's not mm-hmm. simple for me because I've tried to execute it and I haven't had success at it. Because if I had success at it, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also, right. I think, added to that as well, which um, I've experienced something, no, not like this, but in terms of having that where someone says it's simple and you're like, it's really not as simple as that, right? Um, and this is where I think as a, as a, when you're able to communicate with one another, where safe spaces come in, emotional safe spaces, and which is, when we're talking about emotional intimacy, the ability to be able to communicate safely in an environment with the other person, how I feel emotionally. And I think in this situation here, um, he did something which is really interesting. We, we, uh, if you ever, if, if I give you now pounds, right? Now you might know what to do with the pounds in terms of taking it to a foreign currency and exchange it, right? But you can't use it in your land. You can't use it in the US. I mean, you can't, you can't use pounds in US as such. It's not the natural currency. And so what happens is you lose out on that transaction because although you have a form of value of money, so the engagement party that he threw out, the extravagant engagement party was something of value, but it didn't translate to the other party. And this is where we say arcs in that extra question. This is where also Shay and him can get involved in an emotional safe space, which I'm sure Dustin Cole is also doing, um, you know, is, is, is allowing Shay to ask first of all, okay, well, first of all, for him to explain, you know, what that engagement was actually trying to show. Because as far as Shay, she's listening going, but that's not what I asked for. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's no point me buying you a present that you never asked for. It's a nice, but it's not what I asked for. Thus, you lose, even though it's got value, you lose the value to the actual person. It no longer ha- holds the value it needs to. And that sometimes can be a big problem, especially in relationships, throwing something at it, but it's not actually what the other person wants. And it really is a listening exercise in that, in that regard as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Especially, you know, um, communicating what your needs are. Mm -hmm. and then working with the other person to have your needs met Mm -hmm. and vice versa is a skill. Mm. It's a skill. Um, We, you know, when we're not in relationships, we at times can struggle with just managing this, this, this thing called me, right? Then you get into a relationship And you've got to manage yourself. You have to manage expectations. You have to manage responsibility. You have to manage communication. You have to manage what your agreement is. Do you have one? Do you have an agreement? Are we just in love? What's the focus? What are we trying to do? And if you don't have the tools, it becomes challenging. The problem becomes which I'm so grateful we're able to do on the show, we're bringing in tools. And we're saying, if you want to work on your grass and fertilize your grass and nurture your grass, you can choose to do that 
And we'll bring some tools in to help you with some of the tough spots because none of the couples are bad people. They're all good people, but their toolbox is different. What's in there is different. So what are you trying to build and how does that measure up? And then, I, I mean, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, <laughs> there are places to be able to get tools to build a house. Hallelujah. There are places, <laughs> right? To be able to get tools to build your relationship. But if you think you come as an all-knowing store, that is going to be challenging because you're going to quickly find out, I may have what I need to build a doghouse, but I don't have what I need to build a skyscraper. Right. They both will inhabit something, but they are not the same. <laughs> Very different. Doc, Dr. Nicole, with, that, with their situation, it is so unique because it involves people outside of the couple. His mother and his ex are, are very much a part of this dynamic. So if you're able to give the two of them tools, do you think that that will be able to help? Because I mean, literally he doesn't, he's not able to control what his mother does or who his mother has a relationship with. So this one is a little bit tricky because like I said, it's, it's more than just the two people and them figuring out you know, what works for them. It seems though Shay is really, Family is really important to her and having that relationship with his mother is extremely important, but that is not necessarily within Fonzo's ability, Fonzo's ability to, you know, to create if his mother, you know, does not want to um, have the relationship with her. If his mother is hanging on to the hopes that perhaps he and the ex will get back together, like there's a lot that could be happening, you know, with that, that may be outside of the couple's control. Right. You know, Kojo, I love when you talked about boundaries and we're going to see this couple's journey. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, you can control how fast someone drives on the freeway, but you can control what the sign says about how the speed limit works. You put lines on the freeway. You have signs that give guidance so that the person now has to be accountable or deal with the consequences of not being accountable. So you can surely get on the freeway and drive as fast as you want. But depending on when you do that, you may get a ticket. You may get uh, your car impounded. You may cause an accident that then has repercussions because there are guidelines. Did you see it's 55? Did you see that this is the carpool lane? I'm, I'm giving you cues of how to treat me, how to engage with me as a freeway, what's acceptable and what's not. Well, who is the hardest usually to create those guidelines and boundaries with? Mm-mm. <laughs> Honey, that family yeah that family of ours that love us but but sometimes they have their way and until you give them some new rules of engagement the new people coming in don't matter until you give them rules of engagement that let them know this is how we are going to conduct business uh -huh. Right. But it, it's not it, it, it doesn't come as a package for everybody. Everybody doesn't know how to do that at yeah. hello. And it doesn't mean you don't love the person. Right. A lot of people are like, if you loved me, you would. Sometimes you just don't know how to deal with the people that you love, that love you and love this person at the same time. And you got to figure that out. Which is why I love, and thank you, Dr. Love, because you just spoke on a point I was going to even add, which is that boundary issue, especially as well, um, is where when couple, you, you say it beautifully on the show about, uh, are you coming to the table? Or you come to the mat, right? If you come to the mat, your mindset is a win-lose situation, right? So this situation becomes quickly, you don't love me, you don't care about me, you, you don't even want, you don't want to do what's right. Right. So your automatic thought is that they're doing this on purpose, which a lot of us do because, you know, we're, we're trying to protect ourselves. We, we're feeling hurt in that moment. 
um, and rather than coming to the table. And the table in this in this essence is really asking that extra question. Do you know how to set boundaries? Because yeah. I can't, you're not doing that, but do you know how to do it? Because if, uh, because he, he just, he does, I don't think he does. I don't think he would have done it right now. Right. Um, and I think, especially for us as men, um, I always say this, we, we are there to protect, provide, and be a priest of our homes. That protection piece is emotional, spiritual, physical, mental, sexual, financial. You have to protect your family, right? It's not all about throwing muscles and throwing punches. That's not what I'm talking about. But in the sense of the fact that because he hasn't put boundaries in place, he's actually now left Shay exposed and vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And, and a, lot of this, a lot of this issue that he's having right now, he'll have with another woman. Because yeah. even, if you, even if you get rid of Shay, you won't have the same problem because the issue isn't necessarily Shay and her asking for what she's asking for. The issue is you haven't set up effective territory marking lines. Look, lions go around and they pee on the ground and let everyone lions know, y'all better not play with me because if you come around here, you're going to get it. And it's the same thing as men. You have to set up those lines because oftentimes people are, are treating you in a way, and you said it beautifully about engaging you in a certain way because they're used to it. But also you're going to really see who really is okay with uh, with you and wants the best for you when you do set up those boundaries because people change when you set up those boundaries when you say hey this 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 not working for me no more i want to protect my wife you're going to see who really is down for you because in that moment can they go okay okay or they're going to be like i'm gonna create war for you in that case then that makes up your decision as what's to do next i may have to separate a, a little bit give you a bit of time to acclimatize these new rules but it's important as a man to set those boundaries because without it, your family suffers and whoever you get with next, whatever next, it will still happen because the issue isn't outside. It's within. Yeah. Well, Fonzo is not going to find any woman that's going to be okay with him <laughs> vacationing with his ex and you his sure? mother. So he definitely, you are right on that. Right? He, whatever he goes, that's not going to happen. So he needs to get that fixed. And it seems like he didn't set boundaries when that relationship ended And so it's kind of like this problem is going to be there. He needs to fix that situation because most people, you know, have exes. And if you have children, it can be it can be very difficult kind of setting those boundaries. But he's not going to be able to move forward, period. No woman is going to put up with. Well, let me not say that the majority of women are not. (laughs) Look at that life, baby. If you knew. knew. (laughs) Absolutely will. But, but here, here's the thing, you know, what, what is, is consistent is wherever you go, you go. Mm. Wherever you go, you go. Mm. And what happens sometimes with our families is they look at our pattern mm. and they decide, especially without boundaries, mm-hmm. they decide whether or not you are serious about what you're doing today. Mm-hmm. There we go. Right? Because they, right, this ain't good English, but they've been with you. <laughs> right. Amen. They've been we, we with you. We got it. Don't worry, Nicole. We got it. Right? So yeah. they're looking at you and they're saying, you got all this fever. You got all this stuff you want us to do. But but we watch the pattern. Mm-hmm. So until you put a ring on it, and you go down the aisle, which breaks the pattern, we don't have to believe or do what you want us to do this time. Right. Just saying. You're right. You're right. Especially mamas, especially, especially black mamas. Mm. Not gonna, I'm not going to be meeting and, you know, getting to know all the different women that you meet. That you that you are dating. That's not you know. A lot of mothers want to. I want to meet the one, and I already have a relationship over here. So that's absolutely true. You cannot make a black mama do what she does not want to do. Well, I tell you, breaking the pattern is having some boundaries, right? Mm-hmm. Because often what they're used to is you putting the responsibility on everybody else for you to have the situation you want without you having the boundaries that says, I'm willing to sacrifice. I'd love to go 95 too, but the speed limit is 55. So even I follow that rule. If there aren't two people in the car, I don't drive in the carpool lane. So I'm following the rules and I need you to follow the rules so that we don't have collisions. We have discussions. 
but we don't have crashes. And we respect each other and learn how to do that because you went first. You went first in giving us the guide. And for a lot of families, that is the first break in the pattern. They're used to a lot of other stuff, but they're often not used to that. I'm good. Mm, I'm hearing you, Dr. Nicole. You're spitting right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. Just saying. No. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely. And my, my final thought on this, um, I want to latch on what you just said there about the boundaries issue as well and how that, you know, can cause crashes as well if, if people are not obeying the certain rules themselves. Um, you know, I, I think also as well, I think you've mentioned this on the show previously before as well, that this will sh- this pattern of behavior is not just going to be with Shay. It will be consistent throughout the course of how you operate in life. So it will show up somewhere else, um, you know, and so... You, you you almost you can't get away with it so you, you can you can say it's just one part of your life but you'll realize actually that that inability to be assertive is a word i'm looking for to be assertive and a state this is what it is is gonna it's gonna show up elsewhere uh, and i think that may also a lot of, especially for us gentlemen as well and guys that really does show up in the way that we can't express ourselves to our partners so when we're feeling it i can't tell you that i'm feeling it so i end up kind of showing a behavior which is not often positive as to i'm feeling this way and and that does a lot of damage to relations as well so that that boundaries a boundary issue is a big thing it's not just about setting a boundary with your mom but it affects you in terms of you being passive in the way that you even communicate with your partner on a day-to-day basis which you really do need to be doing in order to know where each other lie as well you're gonna love this season oh you are gonna love this season i can't <laughs> wait Oh my God, I can't wait. I can't wait, I can't wait. We are locked in, we are locked in. Well, we have unfortunately come to the end of t- today's episode uh, breakdown uh, with myself, Dr. Nicole and Crystal. Um, listen, before we go anywhere, audience members, I need to do a massive, massive favor. If you don't subscribe to OWN TV, make sure you subscribe to it. Click on that bell button as well. Okay, get the notifications as well. Then next, what you do is you go follow Crystal XO on her channel as well. All right. Then you also go and follow Dr. Nicole on Instagram as well. Yeah, go give, give, give a little message. You know what I'm saying? Say, Dr. Nicole, I'm loving the work that you're doing. Okay. <laughs> um, and also do me a massive favor. Follow me on YouTube as well, Little Blackbird ninety one. All right, um, but it's been an amazing conversation, Dr. Nicole and Crystal. Um, I think we've got deep. I think we've dug into a lot of these couples, and I can't wait to see their journey as well um, as we progress through the episodes. And I can't wait to get a little bit more instruction and, and some revelations from Dr. Nicole. You know, I'm always waiting to hear the analogies. You know, we we call you, you know, us out of YouTube. We call you the Queen of Analogies. There's wow. not a day you don't have an analogy, Dr. Nicole. So we're looking forward to hearing some more analogies about the couples and their progression so audience once again we'll be back here next week same time do you again like share subscribe and then click on that bell button for the notifications of the uploads from own tv and we appreciate you we'll see you very very soon much love